When you're working with large assemblies, such as a plant layout, chances are that you'll be inserting multiple instances of the same component and creating multiple instances of the same mate. To save you some time, SolidWorks has added special tools and workflows for working with larger models to make assembling them easier, faster, and more efficient. First, you define the connection points and ground face in a part or subassembly model. The connection points will be used to snap the components into position, while the ground face will be used to position the asset in the parent assembly. Then, you need to publish the component as an asset in order to use it in an assembly. Next, you can define the ground plane in the parent assembly. The ground face of the asset will snap onto the ground plane of the parent assembly. Finally, when you insert the asset into the parent assembly, you'll be able to use magnetic mates to snap the assets into position in relation to other assets. In this example, I want to add connection points to both ends of the right rail component because I'm going to use this conveyor subassembly multiple times to create a conveyor system. To do this, I'll go to the Tools drop down menu and select Asset Publisher. In the Property Manager, you have the options to select a ground plane, define connecting points, and create a speed pack. Ground plane lets you define which face of the model or ground face will attach to the ground plane of the assembly. For this example, I'll select the bottom face of one of the rectangular base plates, but remember that this step is optional. When I do, you can see that a direction arrow appears in the graphics area and the distance spin box is activated. The direction arrow lets you control the alignment of the ground face relative to the ground plane of the assembly, while the distance spin box lets you add an offset between the ground face of the asset and the ground plane of the assembly. For this example, I'll make sure the direction arrow is pointing down and the distance is set to zero. Next, under the Connecting Points group box, I'll define the connection points. In the first window, you'll see a list of all the connection points that you've defined, but since I haven't created any, this window is empty. To create a connecting point, you first have to select a point in the model and define its direction. So, with the Connect Point selection box active, I'll select a point in the model. Next, I need to specify the direction. This will determine the direction in which the assets will snap together when you drag two assets connection points near one another. I'll select this front face and make sure the arrow is pointing in the right direction. Before you add the connector, you also have the option to give the connector a unique name, but I'll use the default name and click Add Connector. You can see the connector is now listed in the window, and if I wanted to edit it, all I'd have to do is select it and click Edit Connector. I'll go ahead and create a second connector. I'll select a point, set the direction, and click Add Connector. I'm satisfied with these options, so I'll click the green check and the asset is created. You can see in the feature tree that a published references feature was added. And if I expand it, you can see both of the connecting points and the ground plane I just defined. If at any point you want to edit the connecting points or ground plane, simply right click the published references feature and select edit feature. Next, I want to define the ground plane in the parent assembly. I already have the parent assembly open, which contains a single component. I want to define the top face of this component as the assembly ground plane, so I'll go to Insert, Reference Geometry, and click Ground Plane. The property manager is very simple. All I have to do is select the face I want to use as the ground plane, make sure the direction is going in the right direction, and click the green check. When I do, you can see a ground plane feature was added to the Feature Manager design tree. All I have left to do is insert the asset into the parent assembly. I'll tile the windows vertically 
and click and drag the asset name into the parent assembly graphics area, and you can see a preview of the connectors appear. A release to place the component. And you can see SolidWorks automatically added a coincident mate between the ground face of the asset and the ground plane of the parent assembly. I'll add a second instance of the conveyor subassembly, and when I bring it closer to the existing conveyor assembly, you can see that a magnetic mate snap line appears between the connectors. I'll release, and you can see SolidWorks created a coincident mate just like before, as well as a magnetic mate between the two connection points of the assets.